with mediators like these. As guns, rockets, and bombs from fighter planes go silent, the real war begins between the apartheid state Israel and the embattled occupied state of Hamas on behalf of the captives of Gaza. This is the war of words. How can we say that words are more real than bombs? Because under the pressure of Arab states, the U.S. and Israel, Hamas is being urged to sell their souls, as has already been done by the so-called Palestinian Authority of the West Bank. Hamas, hammered by the bombs given to Israel by the Americans, is quietly being urged to sell out the interests of the Palestinian people, a people besieged like few populations in the world by a racist, tyrannical state that pummels and kills them if they dare to resist their bludgeoning. Today, the Palestinian Authority has been trained by the Zionists and Americans to keep their people in line and quiescent while Israelis scoop up more and more Palestinian lands, water supplies, and anything else of value. It is a crime under Israeli apartheid law to even mention the occupation. And these crimes are prosecuted by the Israeli military, where Palestinians, even juveniles, face military judges under military law. These courts are only for Palestinians, not Israelis. It is a mirror of the Bantustan system that once reigned in South Africa. South Africa's Anglican Archbishop Desmond Tutu, speaking of his visit there, said, I have been very deeply distressed in my visit to the Holy Land. It reminded me so much of what happened to us blacks in South Africa. I have seen the humiliation of the Palestinians at checkpoints and roadblocks, suffering like us when young white police officers prevented us from moving about. Now, as words replace shrapnel, the U.S., Israel's armory, and its bank proposes to play the role of mediator. In what world can that even begin to look fair? From Imprisoned Nation, this is Mumia Abu Jamal. These commentaries are recorded by Noel Hanrahan of Prison Radio. Man, we have an interesting show. We're going to follow up. We're going to do a part two and a continuation of uh, what's going on in Palestine. We'll bring it back again. In fact, let's do like I always do. I prefer for the people on to uh, introduce themselves. So started, we'll start with my left. Hi. How is everybody doing? Brother Vincent Cheeks here. Uh, I got a few announcements before we continue with the show. Uh, there's a new comedy venue in town. Check it out, 886 Martin Luther King Drive, called Mardi Gras, Mardi Gras Cafe and Lounge. Doors open at 8 p.m., hosted by T. Ray Saunders. That's every Sunday, Silly Sundays, at Mardi Gras Cafe, 886 Martin Luther King Drive. Also, there's a new movement starting in Atlanta, Georgia. It's called the Stop Mass Incarceration Movement, Atlanta. Um, and it's a movement basically to end police brutality, end the stop mass incarceration, which is basically the new Jim Crow um, in Atlanta, in the United States. Um, we're calling for October 2014 to be a month of resistance uh, to mass incarceration. We will have demonstrations and panels throughout the month of October. Please stay tuned for further announcements. Thank you very much. Of course, I be your brother, Gidon Ben Yashara Al, and honored to be here in the arena with the Brother arena. Yanga and these powerful pastors. Yes. Um, my name is Miriam Slavy, and I am a Palestinian student. Is that so humble? So humble. Is that so it? Humble. A, a human rights activist? There's a lot of other things you could have added okay. to that. So, we can we can Get pick up and uh, we can continue, you know. But like always, I like a president that has been set here where you know uh, Brother Vince goes into because everything starting out with the actual factual. Oh, are you in the camera? No, you good? Yeah, I get you know. I'm so no, no, used no, to no, starting out with the actual factual to get our people to get everyone caught up onto exactly what we're talking about. So, Brother Vince, thank you, sir. Yeah. All right, the Israeli-Palestine conflict. Uh, most recently started July 8th with the kidnapping of three Israeli teenagers 
supposedly. Uh, it's been going on for a little over a month. There have been total now 1,900 Palestinian civilian casualties. There have been 67 Israeli deaths, three civilians, 64 soldiers. Uh, but the war goes back to 1948 when Israel was formed as a state. Mm -hmm. As we all know, uh, they gained their sovereignty in Palestine, taking 77% of the land in a war with the Palestinians. Palestinians were not consulted as to the division of their land mm. uh, going to the Jews, and therefore we are at present day at a conflict which hopefully we we're, we're, should have another ceasefire starting tonight at midnight, I believe, if both sides agree. But we'll see where that goes. You know, you know what, though? You know, I want to put a twist on it. Because I'm sitting here thinking about some of the comments that were uh, on, that people had put on the last program they watched. They put on YouTube. You can check us out at YouTube, The Arena 2013. All one word. Don't separate them, no spaces. Um, they put on the comments. One of the things I like to talk about is how this is relevant to us in America, and specifically and particularly Africans here in America. You have a lot of people that say they have a lot of apathy for this. They say, what, what, what concern as far as uh, why should we be concerned about what's happening in Palestine? Why does that matter to us? Americans in general, specifically Africans here in America. So let's 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 open that up. Okay, let's, well, let's... Um, definitely it's the same struggle. Mm. <laughs> like I say time and time again, the black liberation struggle is the Palestinian liberation st struggle. And it even comes to um, exact things, like in Palestine and Israel. Israel doesn't have the right to exist, but when I say Israel, I talk about the land that it is currently occupying. Right, okay. um, <laughs> in Palestine and Israel, Palestinians have to take a different bus route. Mm. So just like in during the Jim Crow era and during the Civil Rights Movement, Meant. Oh, black okay. people had to be in the back of the bus. Right. Mm. Well, we have to take another bus. Mm. You know what I mean? So you need to ride on the back of the bus. Yeah, you have to have your own separate <laughs> yeah, bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. We're not even worthy to be here. Right. Right. Yeah, so it's just, you know, um, things like that. And that's just like a direct um, uh, similarity mm -hmm. between the two, the bus, because we know the whole bus movement here right. in the United States is so strong. But it's definitely through other things of just, you know, um, Everything of oppressed people, people who have been struggling for their freedom, for their dignity, and they're being um, treated like not second-class citizens, but not even like humans, mm -hmm. like animals. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, I think it is a very powerful question because the relevance, first of all, for me as a Hebrew, mm -hmm. I am a Palestinian, but I also am a child of Yah. And the people that are in the land, from my biblical perspective, are imposters. Mm -hmm. The issue of the fight that the Palestinian people have has relevance for us because all people who are fighting for their indigenous land need to rally together. Mm -hmm. America has made itself a superstar for taking other people's land. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they, they right. got some kind of Guinness Book World, World Record. record. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and people have not rallied because the biblical story says, who can make war with the beast? Because mm. we have a coalition of European nations, and not just European nations, nations that are bent on the use of uh, petroleum-based fuels mm -hmm. that are this bent on world domination. So the Palestinian issue, as it pertains to, uh, we talked about ISIS, right. government within mm -hmm. another government, we need to look at the Palestinian fight to look at their resolve, but their tactics as it means to fighting and killing, uh, we need a different route. We need to killing. Should Wait, we do it at the same time, bro? Same time. This is new. <laughs> same time. You got gavel at the same. You just been oh, gavel. Well, y'all double gavel. Oh, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. So you're saying you're saying we need to stop fighting. Palestinians need to stop fighting and no. need to stop killing. Not fighting. Not fighting. There are fights on many different levels, and how you fight, and it's just like a woman who has a husband and she wants him to do something for her. There is the way where you can go and say. I want you to go in here and cook me something or do something for me, blah, blah, blah. Or there's a way she can use that same love, care, Well, and let me ask you. Yeah, you're boy, saying, we should be caring towards our murderers. Be, be so, tactful is what you're saying. 
Uh, I think what you call it was preemptive love. <laughs> but, but listen, so it's like it's like it's like what Mariam is saying. That's my question. It's like what Mariam is saying. So you're saying be diplomatic, be merciful to people who, on the offset, a crime has been committed. The first crime, even before the killing of men, women, and children, the first crime that was committed was taking, taking of the land. land. So, so at what point do you not defend if it is? Well, see, this is the thing that my beloved brother brought out through his, his statistics last. Like, the Palestinian people have systematically, no disrespect, been they had their butts handed to them on several different occasions. So you have a larger military force that is systematically destroying a people through genocide because of war. So sometimes you have to take an alternative Listen, perspective. Let me you stop fighting. Yeah, you just you, you don't, another message. I was, I was, I was. Let me, let me just say this. I was incarcerated. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Younger, just, you've been incarcerated. You're still so, incarcerated. Okay, we're still so, yeah, you, so, okay, so you know about being locked up. So the man come takes your yummy yums and your goody goods. Yes, sir. Okay? <laughs> He's got your goody goods. He's taking your yummy yums. How diplomatic do you be with somebody with a thing in your butt? How much oh. talking? Do you, not, do you wiggle a little less, maybe? Uh, uh, just tell him to take a little bit out? Uh, no, you want him out of there. Well, I want you, and you're going to do anything that it takes to get him out of your goody goods and your yummy yum. Yes, sir. And as a father, you know, it was hard for me. I, you know, I, I was sent pictures by the lovely Miriam. You know, with a father with his daughter, I want to say yeah. that. Had Rain, blown off. Wait, right. Blown off. Surely. So, you know, and this is to, t you know, Tiffany, see, it's okay for her to, you know, sit at home, eat popcorn. Yes. You know, Putin farting, looking at the TV like it's some damn movie. Exactly. <laughs> but when you got real life situations like that, there is no talk at this point. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and, 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 and I think it is retarded. Mm -hmm. To talk about, well, let's kumbaya and sit here and let's just have tea Wait for the and sky daddy. let's have some sky, the sky daddy to come down peacefully. I mean, it's okay. I'm just so, so what happens next? Because nuclear war. They've been war. fighting this war <laughs> for close to a hundred years now over land. But like it's not war. Yeah, it's not war. Skirmishes. It's, it's, no, no, it's, it's genocide. It's genocide. Yeah, and she's genocide. saying that because it's been so lopsided and one sided as exactly. far as. Uh, Israel's militarization in the, in the army that they have, as opposed to Palestinians, the Palestinians not really having an army. They're basically right. fighting with sticks and rocks. Exactly. Freedom of death. Right. It's yeah. freedom, freedom of death. Um, but again, the basis of this is land, where the Palestinians say it's their land, and the Jewish people say it's their land. Uh, Miriam, last week, she kept making a reference to colonization, that right. the Jews were colonizing. But someone I spoke to said, how could the Jews be colonizing Palestine if what they're doing is considered a return to what they consider oh. to be their Okay, home? good point. So the Muslims had conquered Spain okay. for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Okay. So now if we come back and we're like, hey, this is our land, get out or we'll kill you. <laughs> and y'all are all going to be refugees in France. Okay, or we'll kill you, right. and we're going to raze your homes to the ground. What would the world say? There would be outrage. It's not your land. You don't have this um, this ancient um, claim right. to this <laughs> land just because you had occupied it at one point. Right. Also, the difference being that we were living alongside Jews. The Philistines and the Canaanites were living we're alongside the Jewish people. They weren't living there alone, and we didn't kick them out of the land. It wasn't us. It, it was, was the, the Romans. Romans. The Romans kicked them out, what, 3,000 years ago? Uh, they exiled all the Jews, and that's how they got right. dispersed to Europe and all these Definitely, other Definitely, and in the Spanish... Titus to Rome in, in 70 the, AD. And but. in the Spanish Inquisition, when um, Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand were expelling and persecuting the Jewish and the Muslim people, mm -hmm. the Muslim people offered the Jewish people refuge in Morocco. And that's why there were so many Jews in Morocco. So there is not, a, like like we talk about this not being a religious conflict, that has nothing to do with being Jewish or being Muslim. Right. It, it, it is an issue of our land being taken away from us, our children being taken away from us when they're murdered, when their heads are right. blown off. Absolutely. But right. see, the question of genocide then becomes a very viable, a viable discussion. Because if you acknowledge genocide and you acknowledge the greater force, but you say we must continue this militarized fighting, then you actually seal your own doom. How? No. How so? Through 
the genocidal nature that you've already proclaimed is happening as a result of continued warring. So at what point do you come? At what point is there? So my question is, at what point is there a compromise? I think that as Africans here in America, that has been one of our uh, biggest mistakes that we've that we've done. When they gave into what they do is they bomb you back to the Stone Ages. That's right. That's right. You see, and that's what they did to us as Africans here in America. They deprived us. They they denied us our human rights. Exactly. And they treated us so bad. Still. And still treat us bad, but I mean, I'm, I'm talking about a, a particular time when lynchings, where they could just come in your house, grab you out, hang your father, make us watch him hang our mothers and I mean, fathers. Choke you to death on live, and, live TV. It, on live TV, just do what they wanted to do to us. And so it got so bad, and we were so um, deprived, you know what I'm saying, and so tired of fighting, that when they came and gave us our human rights, a little bit of something, we said, we made it. <laughs> right. Yay, we made it. I mean, despite that everything that is still happening, we're still being systematically oppressed based on our ethnicity and everything. But just because they stopped killing us publicly and stopped killing us wholesale and only kill us one well, or two at a time now. You can't say they stopped killing us publicly. Well, I kill us one or two at a time now. Are you, it's you, under you, the you, table now. Yeah, it's, it's the not right, exactly. Since yeah. they're not since they're not doing it. Because Gideon likes that. I'm going to tell you, and I love my brother Gideon. <laughs> but brother, you're not going to sit here and tell me it's as bad now as it was because what that does, it takes away the works of our ancestors who have came and got us to this point. It's bad. Nobody is saying that this is heaven. Nobody is saying that we've made it. But this is not the time. The mere fact that we're on here talking about Jews and white men in America and you don't have some Gestapo agency coming in there, <laughs> snatching us out of here or executing us without a, without a jury, right. without a trial, shows the progress that we have made. Nobody's saying that we're there. So basically, back to my point, because I don't want to monopolize the conversation, I'm saying this, that we, when they treated us like that, we were so sick and tired of being treated like that. We were so fearful for our lives that when they gave us a little something, we thought we had arrived. I'm hoping my prayers for the Palestinian people, because I know it's hard, and it's easier said than done now sitting and watching on television, that even when they stop the bombing, even when they stop, uh, even, if, even if they let you ride the same bus with them, and you don't have to get your own little special bus, don't give up the fight. Oh, yeah. That's what they want to do. They want to beat you back so much. That when they give you a little concession, you say, "Hey, we made it." Well, that's what Yasser Arafat said. I, I, know I, I didn't want to talk. Oh, I didn't want to yeah. talk about one of y'all guys. No, no, no. But you're right. Yasser Arafat did do that, and y'all made the point last time. Oh, he's not a traitor. He was just tired. He right, he's tired of because he right. can't deny this man is coming from. You know, he was living in refugee camps in Lebanon and Jordan. Like he cares about his people. It's not like you know an American leader who went to private schools and then right. went to a Ivy League <laughs> college. No, he was down there with the people and then he reached this position to put Palestine on the world stage and he said, okay, that's enough, peace. And what did they do to us? They started killing us more mm. and they took away even more of our rights. Mm. So, you know, just like you were saying, you need love, you need peace. It doesn't work with bloodthirsty colonizers. What? It doesn't work with the British, it doesn't work with the Americans, it doesn't work with the Zionists. Mm. Okay. Well, I, I just want to say this, Gideon, you know, you and Tiffany, y'all suffered from American colonization religion. <laughs> it's true. All that turn the other cheek, that is not natural. It's I told true. you about the it's story true. where me, my sister, and my friend, we, we there was a rabbit in the cage, right? Mm -hmm. We kept poking at the rabbit, mm -hmm. kept poking, 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 and the rabbit yeah, jumped out. Mm -hmm. So it's a natural it is human <laughs> to defend yourself, Gideon. Yes. So you can either, like you said, Take them, get, get your yum yums, mm -hmm. or you can fight. Mm -hmm. So it's not natural. You try to impose your theocratic belief on this woman. They're fighting, they're doing the right thing. What you're saying is the wrong thing, Gideon. Okay. okay. No natural being does not defend itself. To your point, okay. that you just did. Great and point. the Palestinians right. have been fighting since the, begin, since the early 1900s. They've been fighting with all they have. Right. Um, there's a, a spokesperson named Saadi uh, for Israel, and he basically just said that the Palestinians are, are fighting a losing fight mm -hmm. because there's no way that they can handle the might and the power of Palestine of Israel's Israel, right. army. You know, so he said, that, "So what are they going to do? They're going to are they going to keep fighting until the Palestinian government is wiped out, Hamas is wiped out, and the Palestinian?" People are wiped out. Then what are you going to be left with? Okay, so let's you, ask Miriam this. What, what's on the table? Let's, but, what but is? May okay. I respond? Yeah, sure, sure. Because what you said has so much relevance and truth to it. It does. For a natural person. And because you said the natural response, 
for anyone would right. be to fight back. And that's what, and this is the biblical perspective and philosophy, before you uh, gavel me, that's what Yeshua brought to, no, hey, all right, let me say this. Gideon. Well, let me just, let me make Gideon, the point. you failed to realize. Let me make the point. The white man gave you that Bible. Whoa. The white, the, the Rome, uh, they gave that to you. You always talk about the white men, this and that. They made up your God. Okay. They gave you Yahshua. They gave you Jesus. They gave you that because it's in English. And they told you, you know what? Turn the other cheek. Let me, let Don't me. fight your oppressor. Surrender right. unto the time. I'm tired of hearing that, Gideon. So let's come up with some earth realm solutions. I now, we I'm talked at home. about Titus the Roman, 70 AD no. in Jerusalem. You do, right? that, with, you do that with us. We're so, talking about right here, right no, now. No, no, I'm just saying that, okay. was, that point was brought up right here. Okay. Right. It was. So, again, this reference shows us that the people that we talk about have a power that natural people will not be able to connect with. That is your belief. <laughs> it is. You're going to make this guy with smoke today. He's smoking today. Look, he's already did it. So, already but, what you have to understand is Gideon is speaking. He is speaking to a constituent of people. And so am I. Right, right. That's really right. And so am I. To his spirituality. Well, you, that's and true, so am I. I'm, to, I'm to, king. I used to be king of the black atheists. I'm king of all the atheists. So I'm speaking to that constituent okay. too because you have you have Muslims out there. Right. You have Hebrew Israelites, and you have atheists out there. Right. So we have to come to a common core of where we can all say, you know what, let's come together. So apparently the Palestinians are fighting for a reason. They're fighting to where there's something on the table that we have to sit down as human beings and right. sit down and say, okay, well, what is it that we can all work together on? Because the American media is going to demonize them. See, they're Muslims. See, they're see. Arabs. And see, so what I'm saying as a human being, I don't want to put religion into this because that's what they use into Most the Most definitely. Right, right, right. right. And, and I totally and, and, understand that. Right. And see, when Gideon gets on this talk about, oh, well, y'all just need to surrender yourself and calm down and let us come over there and have our way with you. That, <laughs> yeah. that comes yeah. from Judaism. Yeah. 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 That yeah. comes from religion. So what I'm saying, okay. because let me just say that like, as an atheist, see, you have Christians, and it would be, and it's no offense, and then you have angry Christians with those Muslims. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But at least I would rather be an angry Christian that's fighting than somebody. See, and this is, and I want to take this. See, Christianity teaches you how to be a slave, and Islam, some people might say, teaches how to be a slave master. Mm. Oh, so no, no. Oh, no, 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 no. It teaches no okay. slavery. Okay. It teaches rise up against your slave master and then abolish slavery. Right. So that's Islam. Okay, okay, but what I'm saying, this comes from a United States media standpoint. Oh. Mm -hmm. I understand what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, right. I so when, you. I, when, I, when I'm out there, I have to look at all of what's being said. Mm -hmm. And I have to look at the perceptions of what's being said. Like I said, Gideon and Vince are trying to hold, why can't they just Palestinians, why can't they fight and just give up? No, no, no. Right. I mean, yeah. 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 why they keep fighting? They're going right. to go, like, wait, Israel, yeah. we're going to give them McDonald's. Right. We're going to give them. We, uh, no, we're going to let them vote their weed. We're going to make the weed I understand the fight. I, I truly do. Okay, but I also saying, understand. Okay. The Goliath that they're up against. Now I understand the numbers that the Palestine, the, the hits that they're taking in their, right. in their. Which, well, I, mean, I think one of the things. One thing to say is that Palestinians, although we do not want to die, we do not want our children to die, no matter what, we win either way. If you kill us, we're happy to die as martyrs. martyrs. So that's right, the thing right, right. about Palestinians. That if you kill a six-year-old boy, no matter what religion it is, he's going straight to heaven. Right. You know what I mean? If you right. kill a 70-year-old man, no matter what it is, he's going straight to heaven. No matter what he did in his life, you kill him in his home, on his land, that is an innocent person. So, And, and then if we resist against them and we kill them, we kill our colonizers, we win. So either way, we're winning. A lot of people are saying, they stand with Palestine, but they're against the resistance. Mm -hmm. And we talk about this a lot. We're right. saying the people who are dying are with the resistance. Mm -hmm. So who are you to come here in your safe right. place, in your home, in the Western world, and say, well, stop, don't y'all not want to die? They're saying, it's fine, we'll <laughs> right, die. Right. We just want to die with some dignity. You're talking to it, right. We want to die exactly. with some resistance. We don't want to die, right. you know, laying down. No, we want to yeah, 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 right, die right. on our feet. We want to die with some dignity on our lands, and we had someone fighting for us. Well, you're talking to a people that who, whose every desire over here in the West, whose every desire has been saturated. That's right. Yeah. They, I mean that they they have everything in the world mm -hmm. to live for. They feel Definitely. like, and I think then it goes back to like you were saying, what Brother Gideon was saying. 
And, and when you're saying, well, damn, they keep getting asked what they're losing in mass numbers. And like Marion was sitting there saying, and, and to me, this shows one of the failures in the African-American revolution and our attempt at revolution through the Panthers and everything like that is that a few cages, which we still free them all, Mumia Abu Jamal, Matula Shakur, free them all, <laughs> take the price off a side of Shakur's head. We, we, we allowed, we became scary. That's right. I'm envious. I'm envious of the Palestine. For those people that make those comments, all black nationalism talking about Palestine, man, shut up. Just <laughs> shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. Shut it. You, we become a cowardly people. And I'm envious of the Palestinian people who can sit here, like you said, the picture of the brother holding his daughter with her hair blown off. And this doesn't lure them to sleep. This doesn't make them back up and say, okay, we're done. Throw their hands up. Make they sure put a few of us in jail. And we quit the revolution. Well, you better not say that. Police going to come get you. You know what I'm saying? So... I think that what, what basically what it all boils down to is if you can't have your way of life, if you can't have what's entitled to you as a human being, then we should prefer death than oppression. Okay. Let's, so, okay, with that, let's talk about what the Palestinian people want. Um, and for me, this is the, the simple, simplest and easiest request that they've made. Okay. which is they want to be able to build a port in an airport in Gaza so they can get resources and material that they need right, to hopefully one day start rebuilding, Definitely. you know, once this conflict ends. So, And I don't understand Israel's resistance to them having a port in an airport so they can... Because Israel wants total domination. domination. Yeah. They don't want them to be independent. Well, you just mentioned compromise. Well, how do we get to that compromise? Because that's a simple, you, that's you a know, pretty simple well, question. Right? This is one of Hamas's terms, right, for the ceasefire? Right. Yeah, right. one of Hamas's right. terms for the ceasefire. Yeah, how do we get to that point? Honestly, this is something, and I know this is, um, it, it, it's very deep into the conflict because this is coming from an Arab perspective, but we, the Arab world needs to be liberated for Palestine to be liberated. You have about 22 countries in the Arab world, mm -hmm. right? 22 countries mm -hmm. in the Arab world, okay. and we can't resist against Israel. And I know Israel has U U.S. backing and U.N. Right. backing mm -hmm. and Western backing, of course, but if we were united as a people, then we could take down Israel. And, 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 yeah, and like I said, yeah. Jordan, you were talking, you made a great point with um, our desires being saturated and how, um, in, in the United States, and how black the black liberation movement has surrendered to some extent as opposed to the Palestinian mm -hmm. movement. When you see it in Jordan, you see people who have definitely surrendered. Mm -hmm. because, because Jordan, okay, you can go. Do you have something to say? I'm just going to say, Miriam, see, this is where I come in and play devil's advocate. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. See, I'm not going to be like Gideon or yeah. Tiffany. Okay. I'm going to come from a practical standpoint. See, most of the Arab world have already submitted to us. Oh, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> definitely. That's the thing. We need a real revolution. We need the Arab world to be liberated. Because they're the biggest traitors out there are mm -hmm. Arab leaders. But you know, every time we go to these countries, you know, we go to Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. we show them how they live good. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we give them all the Mercedes. Oh, and yeah. Everything and how in the how world. they can live better. Right, yeah. how, right. And, and, and we always show how the small Islamic factions are fighting each other. Now, we know it's not about land, but we're saying if you come with a democracy, mm -hmm. yeah. then we can live so much better, you know? Because, I mean, the Arabs can't even get along. Yeah, and look, we got Jordan, we got um, Yemen, yeah. Yemen. It's all the same thing. thing. Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They need to, they need to, the Arabs need a pan-Arabism, like Definitely. we have a pan-Africanism. Uh, and when, one of the things is, like you said, Palestine won't be able to beat them alone. Pan-Arabism won't be able to beat them alone. Pan-Africanism, you know, for all my, my brothers, my black supremacist brothers and stuff out there, won't be able to beat them alone. We need an anti-imperialist movement. That's right. Oh, that's, that's, the, that's the common interest. Someone asked me, well, Yang, are you talking to this Palestinian? Um, what the Palestinians done for you? Palestinians right. don't listen. What they got to do with black folks? Black folks? <laughs> listen, I tell brothers, I don't need anybody. A man doesn't look for a handout from another man. What you do, we, though, they don't love you. They don't love you, and I don't need anybody's love. But what I do recognize is the enemy of my enemy is my friend. That's right. And if you, oh, the God. same dog, the same, like Brother <laughs> Malcolm said, the same rabbit dog that's biting you, the same rabbit dog that is sponsoring Israel, is the same rabbit dog that oppressed us, is the same rabbit dog that keeps his foot on our neck. So if I see some Palestinians willing to damn die, to fight this damn beast. I'm shit. I ain't even talking about dying. I'm trying to get with the people. <laughs> I'm trying to get with those that's going to fight. It's not about, at the end of the day, it's not about me trying to be Palestinian. It's not about me 
making all of these friendships and what they're going to do for us, we have a common enemy, enemy that's right. and it's imperialism. And we have to get past the Pan Arabs, the Pan Africans, the um, the uh, Pan Latinas, the Pan Hispanics. Mm -hmm or whatever, all around the world that are being oppressed by imperialism has to come together and say, look, what is happening is wrong. And at the very, and right now, unfortunately, Palestine is the one that is, 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 is the poster child yeah. for this imperialist oppression. So we have to point that out. It's not so much that we're just on a, a, a Palestinian soil. We're anti-oppression. We're human That's rights. Right. Right. If this was happening in Africa, the only difference is they're fighting so hard in, in Palestine that they make the world cover them. You see what I'm saying? I fight. We have to. When you fight that hard, you're gonna get some attention. Just a little bit of attention they're getting. You know how hard they had to fight. And to say this real quick, because I'm sitting here watching the news the other day, trying to get caught up on what's happening in in, in Palestine and Israel. They had a whole two hour special on the ISIS, the crisis in ISIS, oh, the ISIS yeah. crisis. And I'm sitting here and I'm watching this, and they got the Zebedees on top of the mountain. They cutting babies' heads yeah, off. Yeah, babies, and this, right. The Yazidis, right? And they cutting the baby's heads off, and these ISIS went crazy. I say, ain't nobody hollering about what's going on in Palestine. Right. I mean, you got two hours talking about this. Islam, they want the Khalifa, they want the uh, Khalifa, yeah, yeah, yeah. and this and that. And they want, and they point, they gave them two hours of these so called atrocities. They killed, you know, six children died from starvation on top of the mountain. No child should die, but six children as opposed to 600. Right. Well, the distinction that they're making between. The situation with the Yazidis and the Palestinians is that uh, the Yazidis are Christian, so the mm -hmm. Yazidis are our people. Yeah. Right, that's right. the point I'm making. And also Jews, Jews are. That's the point I'm making. That's why I say Christians. Christians. See, they're more docile. Yeah, they're, and, they're, and, they're, and they believe in Jesus. But that's the point that I'm making. And, and, and to be brief, that's the point I'm making. When it's a uh, when we get bogged down in religion. Right. Then we can they can they use keywords right. Islam, right. terrorists, yeah, anti Muslim, right. and this and that. And like Mariam has said one time before, you got Palestinian Jews and Christians. Right. This is a fight for the land. We have to get away from and this is I can understand what Black Sun is doing by taking it from the religion yeah. because that's right. what divides right. us. That's this right. is a, 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 a fight this is clearly a violation of human rights. These are yeah. clearly war crimes happening here. It's a distraction. It's it's, it's, exactly. it's the way that Zionist people Used to distract the world, like we've said, the founders of Zionism, Theodore Herzl, mm -hmm. all of them, they didn't believe Theodore in God Herzl. at all. Yeah. So, why are we bringing religion into it? I can defend Palestine did, all day. Yeah, they right, do. Well, the, right, right. So, if you take, so, because last week you said they don't believe in God. Yeah. If you take away their reason, their justification, then, because however you look at it, Miriam, they fight in the name of. They, what they, Judaism. They, Judaism. Judaism, right, mm -hmm. which is a God concept. Definitely. definitely. So, they, they, you can't put that on the atheists. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah no, because they do it in the name of Judaism. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. Because yeah. mm -hmm. if you say, "Well, I do it in the name of just because I," I mean, there's no reason in there. Yeah. But if right. you say, "Well, in the Bible, in the script, it says," you know, yeah. that the white get it. He tried to desensitize the white people all the time by saying it's in the script. That's what I'm saying. It's it in is, the script, right? It's in the script. And the Bible says, and Yahshua, and, and see, so as long as we come waiting for some force to. Come get his get in that we will. That's why we're in the state that we're in because we have to fight. Well, then, we well, have well to, can okay. I just say something yeah, really please. quickly? Yeah, I think Yanga made the great point. I don't know if it came out completely, but what were you trying to say that the world only cares if you're using some form of violence? If mm -hmm. you're doing because exactly. okay, because if you look in Syria. You know, people are like, oh, the Syrian children are dying. Oh, there are people fighting for Syria. No one really cares. People will talk about Syria, but Palestine or ISIS, then everyone has their own opinion on it and their opinion right. on what's happening. And there are these bloodthirsty murders and there are these people, people in Palestine, it has been documented when there, when there is nonviolent resistance, when there are nonviolent protests, it is not covered by the media. Yes, yeah, so yeah, when Hamas resists through violence, which they have the complete right to, to defend us and to defend our land, then the world cares. Mm -hmm. That is the only way the world cares. 9-11, mm -hmm. after 9-11, even though we talk about the discrimination against Muslim people in America, how many people converted? Because of 9/11, mm -hmm. because they were like, "What is this? This what damn is, thing? Yeah. What is this evil thing?" You know, they could, and then yeah. they looked it up, and they were like, "It's beautiful." Yeah. You know, because that's the thing. People, they're like, "What's happening? What's going on with these Palestinians killing people?" They look it up, and if they look at real resources, they'll say, "Hey, they're doing what's right. They're doing what every single oppressed person should do." And that's what happens when you have 
real resistance. The, the, the people who are against you will always be against you, but the true good people of this world, if they do real research, they will see why this is happening. Now, let me just say this so that I can make a distinction if I may be able to yes, say please, this. Please, please. Uh, <laughs> there is a difference between religion and spirituality. There is. There is. And therein lies the metaphor and the use of the term religion is to restrict. And I would agree, I'm not a religious person, but I am spiritual. See, to understand, most of our scientists don't understand the spiritual aspect because they related it to religion. Mm -hmm. Just can, can like I, black. Can I well, I mean, you, you hold on to gavel me. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that I can ask you, Yanga, Vince, Miriam, y'all can give me different definitions of what spirituality is. Y'all would not come up with a concise definition. And none of y'all know where the origin, where it comes from, Gideon. It comes from the Roman Catholic Church. That is their word, mm. spiritual. Yes, yeah, so it does. It is in line with religion, Vince. It's well, a nice religion. Right. If you yeah, like so, 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 I totally right disagree with that. You don't disagree with that, but I'm telling you, I know you. My spirit doesn't come from what you just say. No, no, no. My spirit comes from. Where does the word spirituality come from? Where's the origin of it? Okay. You just, you just told me. I want to know the origin. Well, it's according to the etymological term and the language in which you are using. My spirituality, I can't speak for everybody else. Where? I can speak for where, my no, spirituality. No, no, that's a simple question, Vince. Where <laughs> did the word spirituality originate? You just told us. Oh, okay. And you said you disagreed with me. I said for my spirituality, because my spirituality I didn't comes ask from, yours, from my relationship with confused. my father. Right, it gets confusing when you ask about everybody else's spirituality. Right. I simply I, ask you some yeah, question. Where I'm does the word doing come from? Consensus. Okay, well, the word but comes But he's out trying to make the distinction between spirituality and I know. He's and just like religion. punk and just like every other. Black people just freestyling <laughs> and making up their words. It comes out of wrong people. Well, it comes out of the wrong Don't church. mislead the, the world the, community that's right. watching the program. It's according to the no, language in which you are so, using. It's a fact. So it if, comes you, out of wrong. if we ask this young lady. Wrong, does that mean it doesn't have any validity to it? It means that it's just like the concept. Once you control the concept and define it, I don't care what language you put it in, it is a, when it came with the Council no of Nicaea. No one can control the mm -hmm. concept of my spirituality. Listen, listen, Vince, Vince, all I'm saying is that at the end of the day, you cannot unite. I'm here to unite us under a common cause, Gideon, Vince, Mary. Okay, when you use the word spiritual, it just it, it, it confuses everybody. Well, you use let religion, me use it this term. Everyone. Let me let me throw this out. It's here. going to confuse me. It's not. It is. It's not. It is confusing. Is it confusing everybody or is it confusing? All right, this won't be for everybody. Right, he's speaking for everybody. I understand what he's saying. If a Christian, if a Christian is talking about Christianity, Muslims are going to do it. Right. If we're talking about religion, atheists are going to tune out. When Jews talk about their religion, we all tune out. But this question. His, his points are invalid? No, no they're no, not. It's it's his mind, his mind can't conceive from. it. That's why he has to shut me down. I want to ask this one question. To the Hebrew community. Wait a minute. I want to ask one okay, question to Miriam. Okay. Uh -huh. What would happen if you all stopped fighting? We would continue to be oppressed. They would take more than they already have. What makes you say that? What makes me say that? Like they've been proven. doing it. Yeah, yeah, so it would make it easier for them. I need to. Where you going? Because, the, because <laughs> where, where <laughs> end goal, the end goal of Zionists is yeah. to ethnically cleanse the Palestinian population. That is just getting in the way of them completely having the lands. So uh, my point is, if you're already saying they're committing genocide against you, mm -hmm. then if you stop fighting, do you believe the world community would sit by and allow them to? Destroy your people. They oh, yeah, they right. definitely okay, will. Okay, Gideon, all right, I'm going to pose the same question to you. If the Hebrew Israelites came into power, what would y'all do with the homosexuals? Uh, they would have an alternative perspective. Or else, <laughs> what? Or else they would have to change their perspective on how they approach other individuals. How would they impose that, Yanga? Exactly. Now, see, now you asked me, but, but you won't allow I me to answer. Exile is certainly an issue that would allow individuals. Well, what if they didn't go? 
Well, they, what if they, they say this is our land? That's we're not going. leaving. Well, that's what the Palestinians. Exactly. Are. That's, that's what I'm asking. What if they didn't so go? What I'm saying is they would be forced to leave. Because the reality of so is that a righteous government? It is a righteous, righteous government as it pertains to a lifestyle that would prohibit the procreation of the species. I, it's, it's it's basically this is basically is like you said, theology. You know what I'm saying? I can't I can't. It's just theology. It's just going to be, and that's what governing is about. This is the same thing that the is Israelis are saying to the Palestinians that's right. that their lifestyle, their lifestyle that of not being Jewish, Jewish that's right. not, right. it's not adequate. It isn't conducive to their survival and their right. existence. So they so they need to get the hell out of this land. Right. They need to go. We don't care if it was theirs or nothing like that. We're well, looking see, at it's it not about. spiritualism. What, what they're doing is militarism. They're it, doing militarism because because according to, according what, to who, though? Because but if you're going to kill them if they don't leave in exile, isn't that equating to militarism? Same it is. So the point, the, this is the point. In order to survive uh, someone who is natural, and their natural response is to kill you, sometimes you're going to have to be sacrificed. And you're being sacrificed exactly. anyway. Exactly. But you can be sacrificed while resisting, exactly. while fighting, die with some dignity. Well, there's dignity in dying for a premise without having a gun in your hand. Man, you know what? You should have marched with Dr. King, no, right? okay. <laughs> You should have marched yeah, with Dr. Sure. King. That's you know your what belief, Gideon. That's no, your that's reality. reality. Listen, that's even, so even, according, even according to that bill, Jesus told him at one point in time, go so, purchase a sword. You know what I'm saying? So we, we're the people that have looked when our religions, you know, it's the same thing with Islam. Over here, you get these Africans here in American Islam, and this is why I don't rep Islam for all of y'all Islamic haters and Yanga haters out there. I, I don't rep it like that because there's what they tell you: Islam is peace, brother. It's Salam is the root word. It's peace. We're always we're quick as African people who have had a foot in our ass for so booty for so long. <laughs> <laughs> we're quick to always look to take the peace route. Yeah, right. you know what I'm saying. And, and at times, that's who we are. That that's who we are. Oh, no, that's we, that is not. That is what we've been made. No, that's right. That is that's not. We, we have never been. We have never been a docile. We have never been a docile. To, they're killing. You know why? Because what they're doing now, all the, the lot of the our warrior, our warrior class. Before they fight that's anybody, they take out your warrior class. Sure, they've been. Either before they've been infeminized, before they could get to where they're looking at the warrior they, class right here. Exactly. So they been at, took out. They're you taking out a lot. Of their they're taking out a lot of warrior right. class because oh, one the of the word. reasons, one of the reasons they put them in prison. Why? Because you yes. have combatants, you have warriors, yes. but we're telling them there's no war, so they implode. We turn them. Fighters are going to fight. So they're going to fight each other. But see, there's they're gonna intellectual they're gonna warfare, with... and then there's physical warfare. And that's it... what I'm telling Black. He doesn't understand the intellectual warfare. All he understands is the natural, visceral response to a stimuli. But the intellectuals are the generals, There's an power that's beyond the natural exactly. to but hit you... just because you got hit. It's, 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 but the intellectual, intellectual power appealing to who? Uh, intellectual oh, power happens. appealing to the humanity and to the uh, propagation of peace. Okay, let's say we get... And humanity, longevity. Palestinians are out there. We're writing books. We're writing articles. We're writing whatever for humanity. No one's gonna read it because of who is humanity? You need to get to the media. Mary, who controls the media? Don't do it. Don't listen. Do 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 Let me tell you something. Do you see us? Do you see how the black man is in America? We don't have our name. We don't have our language. We don't have our culture. We don't have our. That's what compromise gets you. They say you marry a man. They say you know you'll be married. <laughs> you don't know how to be eating chicken. You, you, be eating chicken right? you won't even be. You will be. Uh, uh, you know they definitely. they will snatch your culture. Most definitely. This but I'm saying, let's say if we were to do that. no, but you're definitely right, and that's what I say. Palestinians have it's the same right. struggle as every it's single oppressed right. people, especially black people in America. The only thing is, we're still able to put up this fight. Medium. And you're saying if you stop resisting. What will happen? And in Nekba, in 1948, when they kicked us out of our homes, most Palestinians weren't armed. Most weren't. There were men who were resisting, who were fighting, but most weren't. So we just left. So what if from 1948, we were like, all right, we're just going to stay in Jordan. We're just going to stay in Lebanon. No one would know about us because we're silent. The only reason why we're on the news now is because we keep resisting. No. That's right. Yes. That's a, I, I, if uh, we that's stayed it. silent, me, they would have been like, stay in Jordan, now. stay in let Lebanon. Me, let me who just cares? say, the alternative to that, again, is the ability to have peace. Gandhi. See, there is no... Oh, Gandhi! Gandhi! <laughs> Gandhi, the hey, 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 of Africans yeah. who called us it's filthy, that, dirty people. Gandhi, the same Gandhi you mean to tell me outside of Dr. King there. Dr. Gandhi. King's 
<laughs> memorial, they got a statue of Gandhi. Yeah. They said, this is what compromise gets yeah. you. They insult your yeah, sister yeah, bullets. Yeah, no, Gandhi, who used to not only negotiate with the British, but he used to sell out Indian revolutionaries who are fighting with armed resistance, he would go and tell the British every single one of their names. Wow. And their locations and where they were. I'm sorry, Gandhi is a traitor. Yes, 100%. Okay. You went on the arena first. Yeah. 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 He's a traitor. Do I get a chance to finish my Go ahead, sir. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead, sir. Well, I just wanted to simply say what the resistance that Gandhi was able to amass in his ability to stop the imports of certain products into his country and his people unify around nationalism was the focal point of my pre uh, preferencing or referencing him and the movement. It's referencing also the when I talk about our people in America. Those are the things that we did when we bu the bus boycott, Selma, Alabama. Mm -hmm. We showed a collective unity that allowed us to break the back in that particular area because of our ability let me, to come together and, and as a people. Let, let, exactly. Let me jump in on that though, because we there's, there's you know, and the people say that. Well, we look at the boycott because there was you had a uh, they had an opposing force. They had the Malcolm. See, we put them in a position right. where they said, okay, we got to deal with the civil rights. We got to deal with Dr. King because we got this radical yeah. over here who's talking about burn the damn place down. That's right. You see what I'm saying? It's the same thing in Palestine. They're going to go with the PLO. They're going to go with the lesser of what they call the two evils because they, they're getting, yeah, it made some headway. It made moves. But had there not been a Malcolm, had there not been a black radical movement at that particular time of people That's saying, true. calling for violent measures against violent, you know, not violent measure, but violent defense. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Robert Williams that wrote the book, Niggas with Guns, Deacons of Defense, Black Panther Party. Had they had not had those, they wouldn't even talk to Dr. King. Yes. They'd have slapped Dr. Exactly. King up and down the street, exactly. kept sicking dogs on him. <laughs> Wait, didn't they, on didn't him. they slap him up down the street? They did it. Dogs. But then, you know what they did? When, when Malcolm Nam was talking about we need to stop singing and start swinging, they That's sent right. out some white reverends with Dr. King. Who <laughs> them, and they started singing together. They started, they, stuck up, they, signed the civil, they signed civil rights in Agnes. They, they was looking at Malcolm. They just rejected exactly. it. Uh, but you know why? Because we come, there's no Malcolms. There's no revolutionary black nationalism. The very thing grounds we made to take him back because nobody's resisting. They say, give me some Dr. King now. was fighting for the wrong Wait things. Let's what? drink from the same See, water fountain. Let's be in the same. I don't want to be in the same school or drink from the same water fountain as you. Give me my own water right, fountain right. and it better be better than yours because you've been killing me <laughs> for the past two hundred years. Wait a minute years. now. You oh, just said in Palestine, you all have your own bus and the, the Israelis have their own bus and you made it seem like that was. I think that's, that's but, a good thing. No, no, that you have no, your own bus. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Like, I wouldn't want to ride a bus with an Israeli. But it doesn't come from us. They're telling us you're going to ride this bus. We're mm -hmm. not saying you stay on that bus and we stay on this bus. That's the same thing with the Black Liberation Movement here. They're saying you drink from that water fountain and then black people are fighting, hey, let's drink from the same water fountain. Yeah. No, that's right. wrong. Yeah. You need to be with the Black Panthers and Malcolm X who are saying we need our own country. We need our black own nation. Well, let me show you two black elements. Was 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 just briefly, two elements that show we are fighting. First element is, see, we talk black, you talk about democracy. Mm -hmm. the, if this was a true democracy, the vast majority of our people in this country don't vote. It's the, the vast yeah. majority do not vote. Right. So if it were a true democracy, I'm going to drop that hammer on you without even letting you know, <laughs> then it would, the relevance of that would be anarchy and an upheaval of this government. This is not a true democracy. Right. Secondly, right. when we okay. talk about education, our people are our children are coming out of the schools mm -hmm. okay. and they're saying well they're not being uh, educated and they're dropping out our children and our families see that the educational system is miseducating our people I can we attest to that. definitely well, don't uh -huh. trust it and the reason our children are coming out through their parental you say our parents aren't involved they're not it's not that they're not involved they are working hard they are concerned, but they see it's a systematic governmental approach to undermine our own people. They won't even teach us about our own history, and our children are rebelling against it. What are they doing? They say, well, they're dumbing down. No, they're preparing because we're going to have to come out of this country ultimately. And this country is getting ready to implode on itself. It already ah, is. The fiscal, no, again. that's fiscal cliff no. is what you can go read about. It's yeah. happened, and they're still getting yeah. ready to come up on it's another wrong. fiscal cliff. Man, y'all please let Ben say that. Okay, yeah. so patient, yeah, let's man. Let's see another demand. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What's another demand that the Palestinians Oh, okay. That's yeah, that's what I was going to do back yeah. to. Okay. The other thing is that the Palestinian people want. 
Now these are a little bit more tougher for the Israeli people it. to, Let's to uh, see, concede to. We're going to see if we get past the arena. Let's hear Okay. This. The Palestinian like people it. want the Israeli settlements to stop. They want them to okay. stop expanding the Jewish settlements, which sounds simple enough, but Netan Netanyahu doesn't want that. He wants to keep expanding. Yeah, Netanyahu wants the land. Hold on. Um, he want, they want uh, a right to have a military. Netanyahu right, well, definitely yeah, doesn't. He, def okay. he, he said oh, if, if Palestine gets military, the only people they're going to use it against is the Jewish. <laughs> it's the Jewish. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, <laughs> they're doing good. They're doing good to even be getting demands. There will be one demand on my list for y'all to get the hell up out of Palestine. Hold up. Two more. Two more. Okay. Uh, definitely. Two I more uh, rights that the Palestinian people want. They want the right of return, mm -hmm. which, again, Netanyahu says no way in hell because... He says if there was a uh, uh, mass ex mass ex exodus of Palestinians from Gaza to Israel, mm -hmm. it would totally diminish the Jewish state. Of course, mm -hmm. And he's not having that. And the last issue is this issue over Jerusalem, mm -hmm. because they uh, Israel has made um, West Jerusalem its capital. Mm -hmm. Right. And the Palestinians have a problem with that. They don't want them really in, Jer in Jerusalem at all, right? Of course not. So. Those are the and issues. And we don't have the right facing. to visit Jerusalem. Right, we like, don't have to match it out. Oh, see, I didn't yeah, know it that. takes 40 minutes to go from Gaza to Jerusalem. But there's no way for the people to even leave Gaza to see Jerusalem. Okay, well, my, and my question is given those are the, the, the rights that the Palestinian people want, and Netanyahu is pretty dead set against of all of that, actually. Yes, you um, know. So yeah. you mentioned earlier about compromise. How do we get to a compromise where, I guess, the Palestinian people basically want basic human rights, Definitely. correct? And Netanyahu is saying, bump you and your people. Okay, We're trying I, to get I, rid I, of all y'all. I <laughs> see the problem here, Miriam. This is going to be a hard pill to swallow because it's hard for my people to swallow this pill, okay? Now, <laughs> <laughs> trying to soften the pill. Sovereignty is defined by your nuclear weapons. And, we, and I respect that you guys want uh, an army, but if you don't have nuclear weapons, you don't have sovereignty. If we can't get guns, how are we gonna get nuclear weapons? Right, right, so, right. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm looking at this from a, uh, a military standpoint. Mm -hmm. But you know you're looking at it from being drawn into, oh, only, this is the only way we can do it. No, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm, other I'm, way? I'm, what other way? I'm sorry, brother. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, but I'm, I think they're doing the right thing yeah, now. Exactly. They're so, killing those Israeli soldiers. That breaks them up. You'll see them like every day on the news crying over this bloodthirsty soldier colonizing. They're, they're crying in Israel for these 60 Israelis that have died. They're not right. used to that. Right. They're not right. used to their people dying. Right. We're scaring mm. them. They're right. scared. And, and they're scared. And I think that what is even, like you said, you talk about sacrifices. I think that even eventually, prayerfully, we hope that the world yeah. will look at this and understand that war crimes are being committed. Human lives are being destroyed that, and it oh, takes okay. sacrifice, it's gonna take bloodshed, it's gonna take that to get that right. See, had our revolution continued like that, and we kept, then our, our freedom fighters and captives locked in, inside now would either be released under the Geneva Convention, see, they don't even look at us as having a real revolution. That's right. Because we gave up the fight. You know what I'm saying? So they, they got our revolutionaries looking like criminal Negroes. You know what I'm saying? They just do, pull some crib. So when you don't give up the fight, it draws into what Malcolm was doing, bringing it. He said ours is a human rights violation. Right. So what they're, what they're doing is they're drawing attention. This is why one of the reasons, this is why we're talking the Palestinian thing and having them on there, because it's about human rights. You understand? And we're trying to draw attention to not the fact that they're Palestinian, not the fact that they're Muslim and all this, but that the fact is you got a bloodthirsty, a bloodthirsty murderer mm -hmm. at the helm. Destroying people. Why these Jews will have you crying about Hitler 20, 40, 50 years later? Schindler's <laughs> List, you Negroes <laughs> getting tissues, yeah, yeah. showing you tattoos and <laughs> of the numbers they got all on it. And you Negroes go crazy. <laughs> you lose your damn mind. And we sit here, you know what I'm saying? I'm sorry. And we sit here and. and Those and, movies are so convincing. Exactly. They're so good at them. Exactly. And, and you see what I'm saying? Man, we sit here and watch an atrocity happen. And not, not, you know, and not have this world cry. So that's it. And then the last thing, and I know Vince wanted to go to say this, when you were saying that they're coming out of the schools because they don't teach them our history 
they don't do this white man he don't do this way that that's our problem right. <laughs> we got to stop waiting for him to do see the problem with our thing is and with our youth the one is we're not building institutions for them we're not building the schools. We're not educating them. And one of the reasons we have young combatants, these gangbangers and this and that, they're soldiers. We're not giving them more. They understand instinctively that a war is being waged. Anytime that police is sticking his hands down his pants on some homosexual stuff in the in the name of frisking, squeezing my testicles, or what you got there, you know what I got there. <laughs> that ain't no weapon. And you're doing all this in the name of frisking, all this homosexuality. It's that instinctive nature, that warrior, that African nature comes out. But everybody's telling them, don't. He's going to lock you up. He's going to kill you. He gonna... So he's frustrated and go back to his community and takes it out on someone that he knows the world don't give a damn about, and that's right. another Negro. Right? Now, I would just say briefly is that for you to say, and I don't mean no disrespect. Talk, no, please. Get Talk, for you to baby. say that we have stopped fighting. I believe it's for you to show that there is a level of naivete about you. Yes, and I think that, see, we went from conventional war through the civil rights arena through guerrilla warfare. We are ninja. That ninja movement is one that is hidden. That's what the word ninja means. And it's I'm so hidden. It's hidden from us that's trying to fight with it. It is. Where, the, where my ninjas at? <laughs> <laughs> it's Ezekiel 45 because the Valley of the Dry Bones and the nation will rise in due time. See, the relevance, of course, against our ability to have a spiritual power is the faith that we have in us as a people. See, we've lost the faith because we've been propagandized into thinking that we're nothing more than a rabble-rousing, gambling, sex-crazed mm -hmm. beast. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, because of our royal lineage, and our survivability. Yeah, that, That's why we're here today. Yes, sir. But like it says, a fruit without a tree without a tree that doesn't bear any fruit is worthless. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? No. Faith without works is dead. Absolutely. We can see we have prayed, we have begged, we have sat in, we have relied on spirituality. Why I say that we have stopped fighting is because we have come become complacent. We have we make up the largest right, like we make the largest incarceration rate. You know what I'm saying? We're systematically being executed Sir. by police officers, Absolutely. like what's happening in Palestine. Sir. You know what I'm saying? So when you look at why we, when I say giving up the fight, at what price is oppression worth more than, than giving your life? At what price? That when you say, you know what I'm saying, that we're fighting this convert war, I would love to see it because I live in the hood with the homies. I don't see. I only see us fighting one another. You're seeing at, it right now. At don't what time? At what time? <clears throat> yeah, I'm a rebel rouser. I'm trying to incite and motivate for us to stand up. You know what I'm saying? I'm not condoning. Let me say this now for the fans come rushing to my crib. I'm not condoning violence. I'm not saying get out there. I'm not condoning terrorist acts. I do condone. condone I do condone self-defense. So much so that the white man condones it so much so he made a law called stand your ground. And that's really if you're scared of a nigga law. Right. That means, you know what I'm saying, if you're intimidated, shoot first, ask questions later. His music was too loud. A brother lost his life because somebody told him to turn down his radio. And when he said no, he shot. It said he shot. So they have even made laws for the, their so-called self-defense. There has to become a time where the black man and the black woman in America says, "Listen, we're still being oppressed. Yeah, we like the way the, the we like the little advancements we made. Now we don't have to ride in the back of the bus. Now I get to spend my now money with you guys." Now, now black people right. need to be taking advantage of those things that they demanded. You know, exactly. if you're if you're given the right to speak on TV, why is it that you have uh, black people working for Fox News? You have them working ooh, for CNN. Ooh. You have them working for MSNBC. If the same propaganda, just because it's a black face, doesn't mean it's going to change. We Black people need to take that opportunity and stand up for black people. Get on Fox News and change the game mm -hmm. up. And, and I know they don't have the yeah. opportunity. Yeah. 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 I, know, I know they don't have, because they're conservative. They're traitors from the yeah. beginning. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And, Sell out. And when y'all talk about the education, uh, and I've said this time and time again, it's very similar to Palestinians in Jordan. We make up the majority of Jordan's population, yet in schools, they don't talk about Palestine. Mm -hmm. They say, we're all right. Jordanians here, and 80% right. of the class is Palestinian. Mm, right. So you have parents back home who will tell them, no matter what they tell you, you're Palestinian. We were kicked out of our homes in 1948, and we still haven't been able to return. And then you have parents who don't teach their children that. And you have Palestinian boys going around thinking they're Jordanians. Yeah, right. You know, and yeah. it's the same thing happening here. They keep oppressing us and oppressing us. It's the same exact situation. Mm -hmm. You need to be educated at home by your mother and by your father, and that's not happening here in America. Now, it was, is not happening But here. what I would say is that what the Palestinians yeah. could take from us is our docile manner. 
What? Because I believe that has saved us and it has prepared us. Well, you just got double double again. Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Okay. So, and, and uh, that, that, that docile nature has not only saved us, it has given us what? the opportunity. What? I think black to people in the U.S. and Palestinians. You know what? Oh, you know what, brother? No we gonna make sure you're not an international ambassador. <laughs> we don't want the world to think that the African head of America really endure. And everybody's entitled to their opinion, but not cool, man. Let not me, cool. Let me, uh, <laughs> let me say this. You asked. Uh, uh, at the start of the show, how does it affect us here? I'm going to throw out a, a number that's $3 billion. The United States government has given $3 billion to the Israelis for their military that's purposes. Right. And on the flip side of the coin, in this past month of fighting, there's been $3 billion worth of damage done to the Palestinian people mm -hmm. and their community. Mm -hmm. okay. Where's the fairness and justice that in that? All right, y'all. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. out of time. We're going to be back next week. You know, man, you're going to be revving on the show. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to be back next week. We're going to deal, you know, we're going to put Vince on the hot seat. Or and your friend, we're going to put, you know, we're going we gonna to challenge the Democratic Party. You know what I mean? Uh-oh. I know you got somebody yeah, for us. You ain't talking about Hunt. You ain't going no, in no, for no, the Hunt. He's, 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 he's so-called libertarian. Uh, libertarian. Uh, oh, right, so undercover, undercover Republican. Mm -hmm.